Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is going to be a tutorial and a custom battle of basically how I handle sort of the early mid-game um, field battles against the British, where basically you probably have your two what I call the brown coat guys, the, the unique regiments that you get at the very beginning, and then probably two skirmishers, and this would be my basic army loadout. I would have a third supply wagon, but it kind of imbalances the the battle. So I, I figured we'll we'll do this for for the sake of making things a little bit more even. The British wouldn't have a general, and I generally try to go into battles where I have slightly more men than the enemy, or if it's even, I want it to be like all fusiliers versus all of their regular troops here. So that's why we did this. Um, so the British, they are outnumbered in terms of regiments. I think they're also outnumbered in terms of men too, of course, and then in cannons. But they have better cannons and better guns and better men. So we'll, we'll go on the British. This is sort of your standard British regiment here. It's going to be three fusiliers with brown besses, a skirmisher with brown bess, a cannon with six pound field gun. Sometimes it's a 12 pound field gun. Sometimes it's also a uh, mortar, like an 8 inch mortar, and then a grenadier with brown vests, and it's just rinse repeat three times there. My sort of like early to mid game army is, well actually we could give these guys uh, civilian muskets now I think about it, because there's probably more, more later that I give these guys US muskets, so we'll, we'll make these guys all civilian muskets and sort of replicate a, a much more earlier in the campaign battle that you'll probably have, which is your two two unique fusiliers plus these these militia here. And these would be militia that are given to you and then you just add uh, a cannon to them, which is generally what I do. So the militia, civilian muskets, three pound caliper gun. So I'll add that on a supply wagon because I would have the third supply wagon and then the the brown coats generally i give them either united states muskets or they probably have brown besses that we've captured too and by this point they either have four pound galloper guns or six pound field guns uh, no no skirmishers yet because those are quite a late game thing for fusiliers so let's uh, let's test this out and i'll show you kind of my strategy on the battlefield when facing what is theoretically a superior British force, but in the early game, you know, it's kind of similar in terms of numerical superiority. Now, the very first thing I do when I get on the battlefield is just make sure my camera is angled toward the British. So the British are coming from this direction over here, and then our forces are over here. And this is kind of what you would expect from a layout um, of, of your troops. Um, generally, there's like one or two brigades that are kind of far away from the others and keep in mind if you're watching this much later on as this is recorded there is no deployment zones or anything like that in the game it sort of just uh, your forces deploy onto the battlefield sort of where your guys are on the strategic maps just keep that in mind if they ever finish this uh, or change it and you know you're watching this much later now what I look at is where are my artillery because the artillery are the slowest pieces in my army and I definitely want to move um move my army around my artillery as opposed to moving my artillery around my army generally i like to have my artillery spaced out a little bit and then what we can do is uh fill our troops in around them uh, as necessary so looks like our heavier guns well the four pounders are right here looks like the militia with the galloper guns actually no, I don't know. They're, they all look like regulars for some reason, which is interesting. Although if you look at their stats, are they the same? Nope. So these are militia, even though their little unit card is different. But um, So it looks like the militia are here and here. So what we will do is actually grab two infantry, and I would like two infantry there. And I'm spacing out my artillery two infantry wide. And now one thing is we are at the edge of the trees, so that's actually probably a bad idea to, you know, stay at the edge of the trees. So these guys are actually going to sit right where they are, 
And we're just going to move this artillery up over there. That one's going to go there, which means we're going to move this guy here, and then this piece of artillery out over here. Now, the British love to hit your flanks, so that's why I'm kind of moving my artillery out onto the flanks and doing a little bit of spacing too while I'm at it. And we'll just move this artillery piece, uh, you know, right about there. That should be roughly where it needs to go. These guys over here. And then we're going to place those guys behind the artillery, and there is a reason for that. Then we're going to move our militia out onto this flank, and we're going to move uh, the rest of the militia. Feels like we have... Oh no, there we go. And then move these militia guys out onto this flank too. And then we need our final unit, which actually is just going to be this guy, so there's not going to be two infantry on this flank out over here. Now this is going to be a pretty thin flank, or thin line, and I don't always like doing that. I generally like to have a secondary line so I can plug holes, but, you know, early on in the campaign you're kind of uh, taking what the game gives you. At least that's generally the, um, the overall thought process. So we're just going to have our guys move out. I put it to medium because that's generally how far the British are away from you. And then let's see, did our if our supply wagons are moving out? And that's that's about right. The supply wagons always seem to be back here. Uh, your general also seems to be pretty far away at times. So you just have to make sure that you get all of your units moving out um, as as needed. Uh, that's not... Oh, I clicked them. Oops. Hopefully that doesn't punish us. I don't think it will. I don't think the British are quite ready for us yet. And then, as I said, we'll, uh, we'll do something like this. And then we'll actually move him over into the center a little bit more. And what we'll do here is bring up you guys. Now, in a regular battle, I don't think we would have this much time. Generally, the, the British are already attacking by now, so let's speed things up. And then let's put a lot of our guys on the hold order. And that'll just give us 15% extra accuracy. So here comes their skirmishers. And then I'm just going to be watching the line. Our artillery might turn like that. Uh, I really actually don't know where the British are. I, maybe I need to put the forces a little bit closer next time and do one of these battles because the British are pretty on top of you when the battles start. There, there, they are coming. And then, um, you guys have shifted a little bit too much for my liking. Okay, so their skirmishers are actually hitting our artillery, so... That means our guys need to move up just a little bit. Uh, it means that our artillery is probably too far backwards. All right, let's, uh, let's get our lines nice. And one of the things that I have been told is that the enemy generally attacks. I'm saying the word generally a lot, but, you know, that's uh, how it goes. The, the enemy attacks the closest unit. That's basically how it works. So let's keep you guys over here. And what I eventually do is I start looking at the line and seeing if there's anything that needs to be reinforced. You'll see the British are pushing their artillery on the flanks. You'll see they're not really hitting the center hard. They're kind of... they, they hit the center and then they disperse out onto your flanks. I find that's pretty normal for the AI. Their artillery is actually going in some very strange places right now, and we're actually going to move those guys over here. I always like a unit behind the artillery because the AI loves to charge your artillery. Your artillery has civilian muskets, whereas British artillery seems to have brown vests. And what that means is that your artillery is very, very bad in melee, and the AI knows it. The AI knows it is better than you and melee. I don't know where their artillery went over there. A little odd. So yeah, I just pan through the line, and you can see like these guys here, 
are really taking it. So I would like to protect them. And then uh, they are going to retreat. And they're going to fall back a little. And then there's some artillery out over on that flank. And I'm not a big fan of their artillery flanking us. That is something I have not really seen before. I would like you guys to move up just a little. And then we will probably hit the uh, hold button to get that really juicy 15% extra damage. Let's move you guys back. Let's move the militia into the line. Militia are nowhere near as good. And then what I do is I combine those units that are a little bit smaller. Now if I cav, that would be a great opportunity to go hit that artillery, but I don't have cav, so I need to keep that in mind. Now I don't really like that their their artillery has flank shots on us, so and there that's what I'm talking about. Right there, that charge. That's uh okay, they routed perfect. Nope, get out of there. And then you guys need to reform over here. And you just have to make sure that you break any charges. Alright, these guys may be a little bit too too close, so let's just do a little little retreat and move. Unfortunately they got rear flanked doing that maneuver, but what I'm doing oh boy. Okay. Well, they flanked us with their skirmishers. That's not something... Well, I, I say that's not something you see every day. I, it actually kind of is. The British love to to flank you with their skirmishers. Um, man, our, okay, this flank is not going too well. Did I... Did I hit B or did I hit F? I might have been hitting F, and that's why they've been retreating. And then this is turning into a little bit of a mess, actually, which is rather unfortunate. I guess my morale is really bad. In the custom battles, you can't get the morale that... Um, like, I generally recruit my guys with extra morale as opposed to... Uh, as opposed to, like, any other stat. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind is I, generally speaking using that term again. Um, I go with the extra morale when I recruit my regiments because I don't I don't want my guys retreating because I, I find that is the, the worst thing that could happen. So there's another another charge in. Let's have you guys combine. And then we probably need some help down over here. So let's let's have you guys fall back just a little. And we'll start refusing our line. Those guys are probably going to surrender, unfortunately. Um, that's just, uh, you know, something we're going to have to deal with. And then over here, uh, we did get them to surrender. If you hear a crazy cat in the background, that is, uh, my, my cat is indeed being extra crazy. And then, can we... I, I would really like these skirmishers to go away. And then... This is actually becoming a problem over here. I don't know where all of the British... Uh, well, one of the British skirmishers was over there. So, we've dealt with them. Those those militia, they are definitely retreating. And then we're going to have you guys group up. And then let's see if we can kind of pressure that militia on that flank. This flank is looking really, really bad, and as I said, the British do like to push your flanks, and um, our militia is not good whatsoever. So let's see if we can get a charge off. Militia are pretty difficult to charge, just because of how they can constantly run away. And then let's, uh, let's move these guys up over here. Washington needs to keep the men, um, keep them in line. And then this flank is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. We just need our men to come back from routing. This is generally not a problem I have on the battlefield because, um, in, or in the campaign, I should say. Because as I said, I generally take the, the plus melee on recruit 
I find that to be the best, uh, best one for guys. Or their, their tier one perk, I take the, not melee, morale. That that's the that's the perk I really really like. Okay, so let's start. Let's start pushing these units out, and then over here, let's have this artillery go over here. You two can group up. Late in the game, I really like to group our units up. Did they? Looks like they broke those guys. That's perfect. That artillery is probably never coming back. And then let's see what we have going on over here. So let's move you guys up. That militia is... Uh, those are actually regulars. They are doing terrible. And then let's see if we can get that artillery up. Get these guys moving up too. That militia is trying to hold. And then these guys will have you move up over here. Uh, George Washington, hold these men. And then it just kind of becomes a mess at one point. Um, really, really in the campaign, I... No, 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 don't do that. Really in the campaign, I try my hardest to take battles that... I don't want to say have overwhelming odds, but... Odds that are definitely in my favor. That's that's mostly my plan, is take take battles that um, I have like one more fuseler than me. But early on in the campaign. You do not always have that luxury, and that's kind of what I'm trying to show off here. Is that that is indeed a luxury, and it's not something that you can always count on. So our supply wagons are getting a little empty. These guys' condition is terrible. I would like you guys to move with your artillery, and if a battle ever becomes, uh, you know, a mess like this, what I recommend is trying to move, uh, move your forces in with their artillery. See, I forgot a unit over there. That's something you need to look at: is do you have any units left? that routed and our will come back so we had somebody surrender which that's a very odd surrender that's that's very far away let's move these guys up over here move these guys up over here i forgot to put you guys on hold forgot to put you guys on hold and um let's see some of you are on hold But yeah, find find a piece of artillery and make it an anchor. And we have we have lost a piece of artillery, so that's something to keep in mind. But when a battle becomes a mess like this, uh, definitely definitely keep that in mind. Now I'll probably do more tutorials in the future. Um, as I said, I I generally take the the morale perk. So that's that's something to keep in mind that I, I would highly recommend the campaign taking the morale perk for your units as it'll make your units stay in the battle much longer. In this I was I'm quite surprised at how fast they they broke. Because for me, my guys don't really break that fast in the campaign. Ooh, okay. So what I want to do here. Um, can you guys... you guys are not the same. Alright. Unfortunate. What I want to do is I would like a new line. And... This is going to be a very bad line. But I think... I think we could charge that artillery. And I think this artillery could move up. You guys can move up. And then we need like those supply wagons to go over here. Now big thing is we don't want British getting their their surrendered men back. Now why didn't you guys char- oh because you have no condition. I would have thought them standing there would have given them conditions. That's that's my fault. I should have looked at their condition bar a little bit better. This is not going well over here. So let's try to do something about that. And then 
I wonder... nope, it moves a, a little bit different. Alright, come on. Get, get, yep, they're, they're just going to continuously um, retreat by the looks of Take the cat off the desk because she wants to join in on the slaughter of the redcoats. I don't blame her, but um, hopefully we can absolutely destroy those guys. Um, generally by now I, I believe that the British would have completely capitulated, but or given up I should say, but that's not the case in this battle. Let's see what more we can do. Alright, we did get those guys to shatter by the looks of it, and then we will just continue trying to get their units to shatter, and there we go, we have a grand route. So that was not a clean battle whatsoever, but I feel like that kind of gives you an idea of like the overall tactics that I have. Um, I didn't explain, uh, always put your artillery in the front because they can't shoot through your own guys without causing friendly fire. And you absolutely want to be firing canister or grape shot, whichever what you want to call it, over carrying uh, firing round shot. Your canister and grape shot is what will win you battles. And to show off, let's see the efficiency. Yeah, so my three artillery, I did have a fourth, but they got charged, if I recall, or um, bad things happened to them. But my three artillery were the best, uh, best on the battlefield. You'll generally see that skirmishers do really well too, especially the British skirmishers. Although American skirmishers do have better stats than British skirmishers, it just takes a little while to unlock them and to get one. If you can grab Pennsylvania rifles on skirmishers, those things will just absolutely decimate. You can see that the uh, British artillery did good too. Their best units basically are their skirmishers, two of their infantry, and then one of their artillery. And that's basically how it goes. So as I said, not the cleanest battle. I wish a few things went different so I could have shown them off, shown off uh, things a little bit different. And then as I said in the campaign, I highly suggest you going for morale, morale, morale. That, that definitely keeps your guys from running away. But if your line shatters like that, just uh, find a cannon and become buddies with it because cannons, they're, they're, they're what's going to make you win the battle. Um, so find the cannons, build up a fortress around them, and uh, just kind of pick off the British with your cannons in tow. That is my recommendation there. So that is going to be it for today's episode. Uh, let me know what other tutorials you would like. Keep in mind that uh, they are releasing a new patch soon, so there'll be a lot of things changing in the future. So I probably won't do any tutorials on the economic side of things until that patch releases and until I've done... Um, sort of a playthrough of that patch and got myself acclimated to the differences because it sounds like they are going to change the economy quite a bit. Um, but I, I kind of think uh, I might do some fort tutorials. I might do a larger grand grand battle of this um, to where, you know, hopefully the lines don't shatter as easily. And then I might show off some battles where um, what I think is probably more, more like what you would face or like how you would fight against uh, the, the Boston forces, or how you would fight against a invasion, or how how you generally take forts from the British, because the British will have like one or two regiments defending a fort, and you're generally attacking with like three or four, is what I find. So that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. Greatly appreciate you guys uh, let me know what kind of tutorials or videos of this game you would like to see in the future and as always guys until next time